When I first bought the milling machine, one of the first projects I did was to make a new quick change tool post for the lathe. At the same time, I also made about six tool holders. At the time, I thought that would be enough, but I find myself constantly swapping tools in and out of the tool holders. I also don't have a tool holder for my parting tool blades, so instead of making one just for the parting blades, I thought it would be a lot easier to go in and make seven at once. Plus a few of you were interested in the tool racks that I have, so I'll also go into detail about how I made them. I'll be making the tool holders from some hot rolled grade 300 steel. The lathe isn't big, so the cutting forces aren't that high, and for this type of project, I don't think you need to go for a high tensile steel for a job like this. The first thing I'll do, whilst it is one long bar, is just clean it up. Doing it this way is just going to be a lot easier and a lot faster. The cleanup process will also help square everything up. Because of the way that they make this, the sides are squashed out a little bit, so I do need to fix that up. The next thing I'll add are just some layout lines. Doing it this way isn't necessary since I have the DRO, but having a visual guide is pretty useful to have. Now there is a fair amount of material that I need to remove, so I'll be using a roughing end mill with a flood coolant. Flood coolant on a mill like this is pretty messy, but a project like this is really suited to having a coolant set up. These roughers are able to take a pretty deep cut and remove a lot of material, but they do produce quite a lot of heat, a lot more so than a regular end mill, so I do need to keep it as cool as I can. With the channel cut, I'll swap over to a dovetail cutter and cut the dovetails. Now in terms of the fit, I did overshoot it by a little bit, but it still clamps in pretty tightly. Now that I've cut the dovetail, I'll mark out the individual tool holders and I'll cut them off. Now from this one piece of stock, I was able to get seven tool holders, which should be enough to last me for a long time. The top and the bottom of the tool holders are a little bit rough, so I'll clean them up. I'll square it up in the vise using a 1-2-3 block, using the front as a reference. I couldn't find my machinist square, and the 1-2-3 block was a little bit too wide, so I'll just mount it this way. It's not optimal, but it seems to work. I know there was other ways of getting it squared up, but I just wanted to get this project over and done with.
With the top surface machined in, I can now stand it up on parallels to machine the other side. With the top and bottom now done, that's the basic shaping done. The next thing I'll do will be to cut the features so I can hold the tools in place. Most of the tools that I have are square, so I'm going to machine most of them to have a square slot down the middle. And to do this I'll just use the same roughing end mill. I could go in afterwards and use a finishing end mill, but I don't think that's necessary. With that done, I'll give the part a quick deeper, and then I'll break the inside corner using a hacksaw. In doing this, I'll be able to properly seat the tool in the tool holder. The next thing I'll do will be to drill four holes for the locking grub screws and one at the back for the height adjustment. And that's the main tool holders done for the moment. The next tool holder that I'll make will be to hold the parting blade. I'll machine in a slot that's just big enough for the parting blade. And for this job, I'm going to use a finishing end mill rather than using a rougher. Next, I'll set up the mill to use the slitting saw so I can cut a very thin slot into the tool holder. Finally, I'll drill four M6 holes so I can clamp the parting blade in place. I know there are other ways of clamping these parting blades in place, but on a small machine like this, doing it this way should be fine. The final holder I'm going to make is a boring bar holder, or in my case a round tool holder, mostly for holding tools that I make from end mill shanks. With the tool holders done, I'll make up the height adjustments. The first thing I need to do is cut off some sections of M6 threaded rod. Next, I'll knurl up some brass to make the adjustment nuts. I know some people say it's best not to knurl under power, or don't knurl too fast, but in my experience, having done it several ways, it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference, at least in brass. And having assembled everything, it seems that everything has gone together really nicely. The final thing left to do is add another row to my tool holder rack. I'll start with a piece of pine, and then I'll machine in the dovetail features using the dovetail cutter. The milling machine does a pretty good job at this, but I'm sure you could get the same results using a router table. With the tool fitting on nicely, I'll cut the wood to the correct length. 
Last time I did this, a few people asked me about whether to use pine or a different hardwood, and having used it for a while now, pine has held up really nicely, but if you want to use a hardwood, you can do that. I'll use some CA glue to bond the wood in place, and then I'll come in from the other side and screw it in. Using one screw should be enough. And then I'll screw the wood to some draw runners. The last time I did this, I bolted the runners to my workbench, but this time I'm just going to use some pot rivets because it's a lot easier and a lot faster. And that's the tool holders done. A light coating of a rust protector will keep them free from rust, or if you really want to, you can blue them. Personally, I prefer the shiny fly cut finish, so I'm going to leave them like this for the moment. And that's about it for now. Doing this is a really straightforward process, and it's always worth making some extra tool holders. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.